Welcome to the Crazy Down Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm Mike the Explosive One. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. Let's talk about something near and dear to your heart. Taxes of billionaires. Because I know. Oh, good. It's, what? Okay. You're fine. So. Let's talk about that. I know my tax range. <laughs> I know my tax bracket. So I saw like a post online and it was like from a tweet Elon put out a couple, couple years ago and it said, for those wondering, I will pay over eleven billion in taxes this year, and which sounds like a lot of money. It is. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's more money, money than I've ever made and will make in my whole life. Yes. Um. So they re- reverse engineered it and figured out. I'm figured out how much he gross. Yeah, she, it's not the hard. Girl, the girl who responded goes, "That's four and a half percent of your net worth." And she says, you paid 3% between these years. She goes, you made $36 billion in one day this year. Like, and so, and most people pay, the average federal tax rate for like a middle class person is 18%. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then it can go up high, you know, quite a bit higher, a little bit lower or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if you pay state tax, that's like another 10. Mm-hmm. So like, if you live in Ohio, you're paying 28%. Mm-hmm. Of your of your salary between state, federal, local, right? And then this mall after saying four and a half percent. Even though it's a big number, a four and a half percent. It's per, it should be percentage based regardless. And the more you and it does, the more you make. The problem is they they have so many write offs from their businesses and all this stuff, their taxable income is nothing compared to what they actually make. Now let me shoot let me shoot some of these corporations some bail real quick. Now the reason that the American government does this is to facilitate these companies to come to America and spend money and make money and and drive the workforce. So how do you get a bunch of billionaires to come in here to your country and America has more billionaires than any other country? Give them tax breaks. You give them tax breaks. Well, that's breaks. why even like movie companies are like, hey, come film in Texas. Yeah. We'll give you a tax break on, and they'll come here and film Yeah, and stimulate the economy and yada, yada, yada. So why are these tax breaks continue to be uh, allowed to happen? Because they did the math. Jonas, this is my favorite this is why Fight Club changed my life. That scene on the plane where he's like, you know what? These these type of car accidents happen all the time. But if the cost of the average out-of-court lawsuit is less than the cost of an absolute recall, they don't do a recall. Same case in point here. If the cost for them to take up these billionaires taxes and lose some billionaires because other countries would have better uh, tax policies. If it's less than the amount that they're making from the billionaires on their current tax program, they're not going to do it. They did the math already. They already, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. They already did the math. If I told you there's a hundred billions out outside and you had to calculate how many steps to get there, you sit here all motherfucking night to get that money. So I mean, you, they did the math already. You're not wrong. If you're like, if you can tell me exactly how many steps it takes to get to that billion dollars, you can have it. I'm going to calculate. I will sit here and calculate exactly, it. exactly the entire night. You're so we're talking wrong. about hundreds of billions of dollars. So are the, is, are the tax breaks coming? I don't know. I feel like the American economy is getting to the point where that is going to change. And thus, from from uh, yesterday's episode, what, what were we talking about? All of these companies uh, taking up the prices, the inflation. Bro, it's all interconnected. And we're, we, we the American, the, the average American is the one that has to really honestly take the brunt of the bullshit. Oh, it's, me it's, the, lower cl- it's the lower class. Yeah, me that, and you, man, the normal guy, the, the person listening to this podcast. You're the one who has to suffer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, billionaires suffering about the prices. <laughs> I mean, they'll tell you that they had to pay $11 billion. They ain't going to tell you that they made $34 billion in one day. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. They'll tell you how many, yeah, how many taxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm about to start learning, dude, about all this tax money. 
I'll be, I'm gonna be a... start learning about this tax money. <laughs> so eloquently stated. And, and why would you be starting to learn about this tax money? Because I'm Johnny? about to run me a company. Oh, oh, why don't you speak on that, man? Nah, dude, it's not oh, yeah, I don't know. Because then everybody will know who you are. Yeah, man. I ain't trying to do that. I, I am going get... to. I mean, but this is a place to advertise, man. You got to talk your shit on your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Not now. Okay. Yeah, so. But I, I will have to start learning what kind of stuff I can tax, tax deduct and whatnot off my. Yeah, income and whatever. And so. you should definitely start advertising yourself. But I will expect payment for advertising. Oh not, yeah, residuals to I'm, you. Yeah, I'm not free. But buddy. Every time you're like, hey, by the way, you know what I really like? This, and it's my company. We'll get a testimonial from TNT Dynamite. I mean, I will. Yeah, I I'll, will. I'll have a test. Are you tired of uh, being awesome? Come. Go to Jonas's business. Please. Before before Jonas's business, I had no car, no job, and no girl. After Jonas's business, I have all girls, four cars, and all jobs. <laughs> that sounds just like my business. My business is called Cars and Girls and Money. Yeah, and then hey, I like, yeah, yeah, I like smile and like have like a hundred dollar bill in my hand with a thumbs up. <laughs> Before Jonas, I didn't know how to read. Now I can read the books. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, man, I think it's, I don't know. It's, it, I mean, you make a good point. Like, there is a reason why the breaks happen because if not, they'll go somewhere else. Yeah. That's, that's a very valid point. I never have really thought of that point before. Yeah. This but, is, this is part of the reason I can never call myself a full blooded, like, leftist. Or writers, man, because there's some of the economic policies they make sense. Is it flawed? Yeah, but you know. Well, right, yeah, like I, yeah, I, uh, and that's what's really interesting. I think about like the way people like go right or left or whatever. It's like how can how can you just be like I like everything on the far right or whatever, or I that like part. everything on the far like that part. I'm a pretty liberal person on most things, mm -hmm. but there's some stuff that I'm like. No, it just makes sense to do it this way. And it may not be quote unquote leftist or whatever, but I did, I did actually find out I'm kind of a center of the roadist kind of like when I did a thing just because when I took the quiz. A lot of people say that centrists are pussies. Yeah, because you don't, you don't, you don't have a dog in either fight. You're straddling the fence. Yeah. Well, I don't like confrontation either. Any, so, you know, <laughs> I just oh, feel like, that, that's the most leftist thing you said tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, uh, I mean, it's. They, you can take those quizzes, like, do you, what do you believe about this? What do you believe about that? And I just answer the questions, and they're like, oh, you're in the middle. And I'm like, I could have probably guessed that. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Like I say, man, when it comes to policy, I feel like you have to, that, that is the true, like I said, man, that's the true nature of government is the policies that they give to the people. That, that helps shape what this country is. It helps shape our belief structure. It shapes the way we treat each other, the way we act out in public. It's like, uh, what? there's some countries where it's illegal to spit on a sidewalk. Singapore. Yeah. There's countries where it's illegal to chew gum and spit it on the sidewalk. I would sidewalk. agree with both of those. They should be. But it's not here in America. Thus, you got people. Land of the free, baby. You got thus. You got people who just spit on spit in the grass. You got people who leave their dog poop on in the park. You know, like the social points that they have in China, we don't have these types of policies shape the way that we interact with each other. I mean, you're not wrong because, like, I. I, I mean, I will be honest. I have absolutely spit on a sidewalk. I've spit in the grass. You urinated have... outside. Yeah, maybe there's not countries the, where that shit is not in the street. Very like, far. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, but uh, but yeah, but you know what else I hate? Stepping on goddamn gum on the sidewalk in the summer. Okay, sucks ass. It does. Don't do that. It does. St like walking out here and there's poop in the goddamn yard because people ain't cleaning it up. Yeah. Could you imagine trying to enact that law? You know how many Americans oh, would, would protest? If I could walk out there and just be like, citizens arrest, mother, and tackle him down and put the poop in his mouth. Bro, think, think of how many people would just flip out on the cops. Americans are already on edge, man. And more on edge now than ever. We're a little entitled spoiled bees, to be honest. A little bit, a little bit, to yeah. a certain extent. Yeah. I feel like some, like not all complaints are like have equal weight. But yeah, absolutely, we are definitely some complaining little bitches. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, very man. funny. I was uh, I was on Reddit the other day, and a, a lady was bringing up the fact she was like, "Oh, I live in this country where I was I was kidnapped and tortured for days, 
And she was like, do Americans really feel like they're depressed? <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, lady. I really hope you're okay. She's like, yeah, I've been hiding in this fucking safe house with my immediate family. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Americans are and whining people are little like, bitches. What do you mean There's, I, you're out of decaf coffee? Yeah. That's what they're mad about. How dare they class the black person to play Ariel? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean a guy can't wear a dress? Like... Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, man. It's like I feel like a lot of the things that, it, especially in the last couple of years, especially in the last couple of years, have just inf infantilized Americans. Wow, I don't know what that word means. Means that we're we're getting more and more like we're regressing as far as like. Our, oh yeah, idiocracy is real. As far as like our age projection of the community like we were acting like teenagers because we are a teenage country and now it just feels like everybody's like i don't like broccoli i don't like his hair i don't like the way you're you look liberal i don't like the way you think i don't this is so so childish in nature to me there's so much more important things as adults we should be picking our president on policy i haven't heard a fucking policy come out of any of these motherfuckers no, i watched they, the they, rnc no they're 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 worried about they want a policy the policies how many people you let in the country exactly because the leader of one side is a guy who doesn't run on policy vivek ram swami is a goddamn genius but we ain't gonna we ain't gonna get him in there we already had obama and you see what that got us what does that mean? I mean, Obama was the precursor to Trump, man. What do you think that means? They, I know they tried to say he wasn't from America. <laughs> there was a whole big thing about that. <laughs> we are at time, but <laughs> there would be no Trump. If, there would be no Trump if there was no Obama. If certain certain subsets of this oh, country like, didn't people feel were like so they, mad that a black dude got in office, they they put in like a far right. I, I think that Trump is uh is 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 white America's Obama. Oh oh that's that's uh, while Obama was like, you know, black America's like, hey, we got we did it. You guys were like, hey, let's hire a fucking rock star. And you got one. <laughs> rock star. Trump is a rock star. A hundred percent. Yep. Stand on it. Yeah, rock I mean star. 100 percent he was a tv star he just was, coke driven sex coke -driven. just like slapping girls on the ass gets out on there on stage hello ohio down <laughs> everybody Whoa! and then he gets off he ain't said shit <laughs> <laughs> Brown. <laughs> like, just, uh, we love Brown. you cleveland good night <laughs> on that note that's all the time we have today's episode please go to thecrazytown.com subscribe for jonas tnt oh yeah